good evening everyone and welcome to this evening's introduction to bookkeeping revision session. Can I just check that you can all hear me before we get started this evening? Yeah, okay, that's brilliant. Thank you for letting me know. Okay, so this evening's session, it will be recorded. So if you wouldn't mind just keeping yourself on mute throughout the session, in order to participate in the session, if you could use a chat box and use a chat box as well, if you've got any questions that you'd like to ask me. At the end of the session, I will hold on. So if anyone has any questions that they would like to ask me about anything to do with any of the courses at First Intuition, please just let me know. OK, so in this evening's session, we're going to be looking at task seven of the assessment, which is looking at processing receipts and payments into a two column cash book. And then we're also going to move on to task eight, which is going to be looking at the analysed petty cash book. So I'm just going to share my screen. Now with a task, so you should all be able to see it up on the screen. Okay, so task seven of the assessment, as I say, it's looking at processing receipts and payments into a two column cash book. Now we call it a two column cash book because of the two main columns, which are accounting for cash, physical cash being received or paid out. And then we've got the, any money that's paid into into the bank so either through check or any bats there are more columns though than just the two we have all the different analysis columns now the cash book is split into two sides so remember we've got the debit side of the cash book which shows receipts any money that's coming into the business bank account it's a debit because it's going to increase the asset so therefore, we need to debit the account for any money that's coming in. Now, any receipts in the form of cash, we will enter into the cash column of the cash book. Any amounts that's coming into the business as checks or as I say, any backs, then we would enter them into the bank column. As well as completing the cash in the bank column, you need to remember to complete the analysis column as analysis columns as well. Now, one thing to watch out for is that you will have a VAT column. Now, remember, if it's money that's been received from a trade receivable, at the point of sale, when that, when that customer purchased goods from us, we would have recorded the VAT in the double entry um, bookkeeping system at that point in time. So when we actually receive the money from the customer, we don't need to account for VAT. Then we've also got the credit side of the cash book. So the credit side of the cash book is any um, uh, amounts that's going out, any money that's being paid, for example, to any trade payables would be entered onto the credit side, which will reduce the asset account. Just like with the debit side of the cash book, we have a cash column in which we will enter any physical cash that's been paid out of the business. And then we also have a bank column in which we will enter any checks that have been paid out of the business. Again, you will also have the analysis columns and the same thing with the VAT. So when it comes to a credit purchase, at the point of purchasing those goods, we will have allowed for the VAT in the accounting system at that point. So when we actually pay the money out of the bank to a credit supplier, we don't need to separate the VAT, but you'll see that in a minute once we get onto the actual exercise. Once you've entered all the different transactions into the cash book, you then need to total each of the columns and you need to balance off the account. Remember you look at the total, the total, the highest total on either the debit side or the credit side will be entered um, into both sides of the account. And then the lower side would become the balance carried down. 
Okay, so we're going to have a little look at a task now. Remember, use the chat box in order to participate. Okay, so task seven, there are three payments to be entered in the credit side of Archie Limited's cash book during one week. So we're told that it is the credit side of the cash books. That Remember, that means that it's money that's going out of the business bank account. So we've got a cash purchase listing for Bob Limited, and we're told the net, the VAT, and the gross value. And then below that, we've got a trade payable listing. And you can see that it says credit suppliers paid by check. Task A, enter the details from the cash purchases listing and the trade payables listing into the credit side of the cash book shown below and total each column. Make sure that you remember to total each of the columns once you've entered all the transactions in. So remember, it's the credit side. So it's payments. Going out, so therefore they're reducing the asset. And you can see that there's already a balance brought down on the bank account of £1,000. So looking at the first one, the cash purchase listing for Bob Limited, we can see that we've got a net amount of 200, VAT of 40 pounds, and then we've got the gross of 240. So under the details column, what will we enter there for that first entry? If you just type your answer into the chat box. Anyone got any ideas? What, what would we enter here for the details? Okay, so we're told that it's a supplier paid in cash. And we're told whoops, wrong pen, it's for Bob Limited, it's to Bob Limited. So the details in the cash book, we will just enter the... And then we've got our two columns, which is for cash and bank. And this is why we refer to it as the two column cash book, just because we're separating physical cash from money actually coming out of, of the business bank account itself. So you can see that we're, we're showing the amount and it's being broken down into three sections. Good, Catherine. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Paid in cash. Yes, yeah, so we'd put it into the cash column. And what amount would we put in there? Brilliant. Yeah, well done. Yeah. So it is always a gross amount that goes into either the cash or the bank column. Good. So we've entered it into the cash column. Now we've got to enter it into the analysis column. So where else will we enter the details? The VAT and the cash purchases. Brilliant. Yeah. So what amount will we enter into the into the VAT column? The 40, yeah. And what about into cash purchases? Good. Yes. Yeah, so the, the net amount will always be entered into the analysis column. Good. Okay, so we've We've dealt with the first one. 
Now we've got the trade payable listings. Remember, it says credit suppliers paid by check. So first of all, we've got Charlie Limited and we've paid them £2,000. And then we've got David PLC for £3,000. So what will, what will we enter under the details column for the first one? Yeah, good. Yes, yeah, so it's just the names of the suppliers. Okay, and then we've got the amount of £2,000. Remember, it's a cheque paid. So where will, where will we enter that? Will it be entered into the cash or the bank column? Bank column, good. Good. Yeah, because we're told that it's a cheque. Now, which analysis column will we enter this £2,000 in? The payables, excellent. Good, and remember, we don't need to allow um, for VAT when it's um, to, to a credit supplier because we will have already allowed for that VAT at the point of purchase. So last one, what will we enter under the details column? Good, yeah. Yes, yeah, so we've got David PLC. And then the 3000, where will we enter that? Which column will that be entered in? So would we enter it into the cash or the bank column? The bank column again, yeah. And which analysis column? Again, the payables column, excellent, good. So you can see now that we've entered all three of the transactions. So now the next step is to total up the columns. Make sure you remember to total them up. So we've only got one entry in the cash column. So we'll put the 240, what about the bank column? Good. That column, we've just got one. What about the payables column? Good. Now remember, that balance brought down of a thousand pound in the bank is on the credit side. What does that mean? If the bank has an opening balance on the credit side, can you remember what that means? Mm. Yes, yeah, so it, it does mean that money's coming out, yeah, but when it's an opening balance, yes, you're right, it means that the bank is actually overdrawn, so they've spent more money than what they had coming in, so that's just one thing to watch out for. Whereas if the balance brought down on the debit side, it's a positive balance. Okay, so part B. The debit side of the cash book shows that the cash balance brought forward at the beginning of the week was £500 and a further £250 has been received during the week. So remember, this is the credit side of the cash book. So generally, the debit side of the cash book and the credit side will be shown as two, two separate um, cash books. So what we can do with a question like this, we can draw out a T account. So if we just draw one out that just says cash book. And we're told that the debit side of the cash book shows that the balance brought forward at the beginning of the week was £500. So on the debit side, the balance brought down at the beginning of the week, £500. Then during the week, 
they received a further £250. That £250 received is going to increase the asset of cash. So therefore, it's going to be entered onto the debit side of the account. So part B is using your answer to A, calculate the cash balance at the end of the week. So we know that on the debit side, they've got the balance brought down of 500, the cash received of 250 pounds. And then under the cash column, we can see credit balance of 240 pounds. So on the credit side, we will enter at 240. So yeah, so what is the, the cash bar? And I can see that there's already an answer there in the chat box, 510 pounds. Brilliant, well done. So that is the 500 plus the, plus the 250 minus the 240 pound credit. Good, brilliant. Okay, so similar question again. So it says the debit side of the cash book shows that the total amount of money banked during the week was £4,200. And then part C, using your answer to A, calculate the bank balance. If your calculations show that the bank account is overdrawn, your answer should start with a minus sign. So if your answer is showing that the, the bank is overdrawn, make sure you use a minus sign, otherwise you'll lose marks in your exam. So we're doing the same thing again, but instead of looking at the cash balance, we're looking at the bank balance. So therefore, we need to concentrate on the bank column of the cash book. So we're told that the debit side of the cash book shows a total amount banked of £4,200. So again, we can draw it out um, into a little T account just so we can visually see what's happening. So the debit side has £4,200 in. And if we look at the credit side of the cash book, it shows that we've got an amount going out of the bank of £6,000. So we will enter that onto the credit side of the T account. So what is the the bank balance at the end of the period. Good, yeah. Yes, it's minus 1,800, good. So they had 4,200 pounds coming into the bank, but then they had 6,000 pounds going out. So they had more payments going out than what they had coming from. Good, well done. Okay, so moving on to task eight now. So task eight, similar question. So we're looking at processing receipts and payments, but this time, rather than a cash book, we're going to be looking at an... Now remember what petty cash is. So petty cash is a small amount of money that the business will hold to buy small purchases. Things like buying milk, coffee, biscuits for the office, could be paying a taxi fare to go and see a client. So petty cash, it may be kept in a petty cash tin locked in an office. Now, you must be familiar with the impress system. Remember, the petty cash impress system is where a business will have a certain amount of petty cash that they will have in that tin at any one time. So it might be that every week they have a hundred pound petty cash in that tin. So no matter what, what payments are made out of petty cash at any one time, there will always be a hundred pound in that tin, whether it's physical cash or a combination of cash and petty cash vouchers. So the cash that's in the tin plus the value of the petty cash vouchers would always equal that hundred pound. Then at the end of the period, maybe at the end of each week, um, that impress level will then need to be restored back up to a hundred pounds. So in this type of task, 
you might be asked to enter some petty cash vouchers into a petty cash book. These are payments that are going out of the business, therefore they will be entered onto the credit side of the petty cash book. So any amounts going into the petty cash book will be entered onto the debit side. So that will mainly just be the impressed value from when, when the petty cash is being restored. Again, there will be analysis columns, you'll have VAT, and then there'll be different categories of what what the payments are for now but they will differ depending on the type of business now you may also get a question where you need to restore the impress level amount so for example if a business sets their impress level as a hundred pound money out of that petty cash tin and the physical cash remaining in that tin is only 30 pounds then they would need to cash a cheque for £70 in order to restore that back up to £100. Okay, so let's have a go at a task now. So we can see here that this company maintains a petty cash book as a book of prime entry and part of the double entry bookkeeping system. This is a summary of petty cash transactions in a week. And then we've got three different transactions. Part A says complete the petty cash book as follows. Firstly, enter the above transactions into the partially completed petty cash book below. And then secondly, total the petty cash book and show the balance carried down. And then we've got, you can see here, we've got the petty cash book. We've got the debit side. And the notice is that the debit side of the petty cash book is always smaller than the credit side because the credit side is where we enter the payments and then they will be analysed into different categories. Balance brought down on the account of £100. So that's showing us that the impress level is £100. And then we've already got a payment been, been entered for milk of £8. So if we have a look at the first one, so we've got um, a taxi fare and um, then we're told that that isn't applicable. So it's a payment, so it's going to be entered onto the credit side to reduce the asset of cash. What will we enter into the details column? Good. Yeah, so we would put now the amount column. How much would we enter into into the amount column? Twelve pound. Yeah, because it's telling us that that isn't applicable, so we don't need to worry about that. When you do have that involved, though, do watch out. Is the amount that they're giving you the gross amount or is it the net amount? Because how you will um, calculate the VAT will differ between them. So just make sure you're, you're reading the question properly. OK, so then we have the analysis columns. Don't need to enter anything there. And then we've got travel expenses and office expenses. So which one will we enter the £12 into? Good. Well done. Okay, next we've got pens purchased for £8 plus VAT. So what will we enter into the details column? Yeah, so we, we can just put pens. Now remember it says but the pens were £8 plus VAT. Therefore, what amount will we enter into the amount column? Yeah, you're right. Well, actually, is that 130?
Yeah, I'm not sure, Ruby. Have you have you mistyped that figure there? Yeah, yeah. So in the amounts column, yeah, you would put nine pounds sixty. So remember, this column will always have the gross gross amount in. So therefore, what amount will we put for VAT? Yeah, it's one pound sixty. So remember, you times it, you times it by not point two in order to get the VAT. Because the eight pound, it says it's eight pound plus VAT. So therefore, the eight is a net. Then we've got the net amount of eight pounds. So which column will we enter that in? Travel expenses or office expenses? Good. Okay, and then last one. So we've got a train fare paid for eighteen pound, including VAT. So what would what will we enter un, under details first? Yeah, yeah, so this one this time is a train fare. Oops. Now we're told that it's £18 including VAT. So what amount will we enter into? Good, yeah, because, because it's including that, that means it is actually the gross amount that's being given. So just take care with that. So what is the value of that? Good. Three pound, remember if you've got the gross, you can just do gross divided by six and that will give you the VAT amount. So what is the value of the net amount? 15, yeah, and which column will we enter that into? Travel expenses or office expenses? Travel, good. So we've entered all the transactions in. So we've done the first part of the task. And remember the second part, we need to total the petty cash book and show the balance carried down. So the best way to do this when, when you need to balance it off is first of all, total up the analysis columns. So if we start off with the office expenses, what's the total of the office expenses? Oops. Yep. So what's the total that we need to enter for travel expenses? Twenty seven. Good. Remember to watch out for when you're totaling them up. What about the VAT column? Good. OK. So we've totaled up the analysis column. This is where it comes to balancing the account off. So we know that the impressed amount is £100. And you can see that the total on the left-hand side of the account, we've got 100 So remember, when you balance off an account, you total up the debit side, total up the credit side, and the highest total is entered as the total in both sides of the account. So therefore, figure do we need to enter here?
Mm, nearly. When you think about balancing off a, yeah. So when you balance off the account, ignore all the other columns and the other entries at the moment, and remember about this one hundred pound that you've got on the debit side. So remember, the total needs to be the same on both sides of the account. So therefore, in this box here, the £100, so that both the debit and the credit side has a total amount of a. But if we were to total up this credit side, so this this column, it doesn't actually equal a hundred pounds. So what do we need to do? What do we need to enter in the account? So just think about how we balance off a, a T account normally. Good, yeah, excellent, 52 pound 40. And what is that amount called? What what would we label it? The balance carried down. Excellent. Well done. Yeah, brilliant. So just in case anyone's unsure, so that is um, the total of £100 minus all the amounts that are already inserted. The eight the £12, £9.60 and £18. So that now both the debit side and the credit side equal that total of £100. Okay, so moving on to part B. So at the start of the, of the next week, cash was withdrawn from the bank to restore the impress level of £100. What is the amount of cash that would have been withdrawn from the bank to restore the impressed level? So we've got an impressed level of £100. How much do we need to restore that, um, that impressed level? Good, excellent, yeah. £47.60. So we know that we've got um, £52.40 in our petty cash book. The impress level is £100. So if we do £100 minus the £52.40, that equals our £47.60. So that is the amount that we need to put back into the petty cash tin in order to Restore that impressed level back up to £100. Excellent. Brilliant. Okay, so thank you very much for your participation this evening and for attending this evening's revision session. You will all receive the recording within around 24 hours. If you do have any further information about any of our revision sessions, please contact us at aatrevision at fi.co.uk. As I say, if you do have any questions at the end of the session, please feel free to hold on to ask me. Um, but as I said, thank you very much for participating this evening.